Then I take, I take the point. Mr. Mgomezulu must come to court, even if <coughs> he's got to be carried, to come and tell us whether he is still acting for accused number one. Well, there you have it. Mr. Ngomezulu must come back to the courtroom and he must tell the court what is going on, what arrangements is he making because he cannot just continuously still be absent because cross-examination is starting. Actually, cross-examination could not start today. Imagine that after we were looking forward to this moment. Cross-examination could not start today because there was an issue with Ungomezulu. There was not an issue. It was not clear the way forward exactly because Nisi says, hey, I was covering him until Friday, but I don't know what's happening this week. And I don't know if accused number one is fully adequately covered. And if we continue with this case and him not being in the courtroom, we run the risk of Moses Sevilla one day raising his hand and saying, you know what, mistrial. I haven't been represented. <clears throat> My legal representation hasn't been here. But you know what? Let's talk about this. This is why <laughs> I'm always asking you guys to like, comment, and subscribe to help me here on the YouTube channel. Because let me tell you something about work politics, okay? <laughs> work politics, that's a whole other beast on its own, okay? Things start nice and easy. Can you cover me? Yes, I'll cover you. Until it's kind of like, mm, you've been gone a while. My workload has increased. Now I've got to be covering your client. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now I've got to be covering your client. And I also have my client. And we already know Omnisi doesn't do any extra work. Not that Omnisi is not the extra worker or a hard worker. And that he is a very, very highly focused guy. And he wants to get the job done and he doesn't just want to do the job he wants to do an excellent job at it we saw him offload okay accused number three for his solitary confinement complaint okay he offloaded that to umlung away to and that has been handled within 30 days so now if umnisi is saying listen if i'm covering because now the coveration was okay i was okay with the coveration because it was evidence in chief but now when we're in cross-examination, I cannot be studying for two clients when I'm being paid for one. I cannot be studying for two clients because you know how Nisi does his cross-examination, guys. He is detailed. He hammers down the witness. He asks questions. He takes his time. And he takes days upon days upon days. I mean, last time we saw him go get that lever, okay? We saw him go to, <laughs> was it Builders? He went to Builders, okay, to buy the Bayations, okay? Because him and Mangana were not speaking the same language. And he said, no, I'm gonna need you to visually demonstrate this to me. So that is the kind of legal representative that Umnisi is. He's not a, I'm gonna work this halfway through no he wants to give a full his full commitment so basically what Nisi is saying is i cannot give umuzi severe that full commitment as the cross-examination is about to begin because that's a lot of work okay evidence in chief is just we're listening okay and jotting down a few things here and there but cross-examination you have to dive into the deep end and swim. And if you stop swimming, you are drowning. And Dumnisi doesn't want that responsibility where accused number one is going to say, listen, this isn't working, mistrial. <clears throat> okay? Because as he said, I am an officer of the court. And Dumnisi has vast years experience in that courtroom it is absolutely sad that um shalolo was not in the courtroom okay she wasn't there and mr cameraman shame on you for not following the assignment okay we needed to see zoom zoom accused number three accused number five we want to see what they look like after a good night's rest in their brand new accommodations okay but you know what i digress so that is what umnisi was saying so the judge says, you know what? I get it. gomez has got to come to the courtroom. And advocate Ngomalo is the one who took on the assignment to go and call gomez to relay the message. Now the irony, okay, the irony is gomez response. So I'm going to add the clips here. So let's go ahead and watch it. And then I'll catch you on part three, okay? You don't want to miss part three. You, you don't want to miss part three. 
because Judge Redder comes for us. Okay? So make sure you like, comment, subscribe. I'll catch you over there in the comment section. You already know. And as well, please do me a huge favor down in the comment section down below. I will leave a link to my backup channel. Okay. Cause you know, I, I, I don't have any colleagues. Okay. I don't have anyone to work for me and I would like to have my backup channel up and running and fully monetized. Okay. I've already hit the 4,000 hours. I've already hit the 4,000 hours plus plus and done done. I just need the subscribers and I need your help because I have a project. I have a huge project that I need to work on on that channel. But I don't want to work if I'm not being paid. Exactly like Um Nisi. Nisi is not, not willing to put in the work and there's no money exchanging hands. That is really the main concern, if I am being honest, or at least that's what I'm seeing from this side of the screen. So let me know in the comment section your thoughts. I'll catch you on my next upload. Watch the clips here to the end so that when we get to part three, you know what's going on. Because I'm just going to continue commenting from there. Thanks for watching. Catch you on part three. Just before we start, my lord, um, we had a discussion with uh, Advocate Nisi and, and other colleagues about the continued absence uh, of Mr. Mgomizuli. Now that Mr. Uh, now that the court also mentioned uh, his absence, and we've been wondering what impact it might have, you know, on 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 the fairness of the you know of of, of the proceedings, and we are really concerned a lot about his his continued uh, absence. And we feel that at some point he'll have to come put on record that he agrees that the proceedings may continue in his absence and as to how he will keep himself abreast of the developments in the case. Uh, but didn't we say that, didn't Mr. Mnisi say that, that he will keep himself abreast of the case by perusing some of the proceedings on what? YouTube? Yes. Uh, Which is not a court record. Yes. But then I, he said again, he will request the proceedings which were conducted in his absence, the record of the, those proceedings, so that he can read them. Didn't he say that? I, I, I think during his initial absence. Yeah, he said he'd read those, and after reading those, then he'll be able to cross-examine. That's why he requested this court and yourselves that he must cross-examine, although he's one, accused number one. Yes. My, my, my recollection was that um, in the initial stages of um, Brigadier Gininda's evidence, that's this what he said. Yeah. Um, but regarding. Now it doesn't apply to cross examination. Yeah, regarding cross examination, I, I, I don't remember him specifically mentioning that. <laughs> Mr. Ramosipidi, that's. What do you remember, sir? My Lord, uh, as the court pleases, my memory as well. Uh, aligns with Advocate Baloi, that the arrangement was only for the evidence in chief of Brigadier Gininda. Yeah. Especially after the Brigadier had finished evidence relating to accused number one. Yeah. So that we can proceed with evidence of accused number two, three, four, and five. Oh. Mainly for the evidence in chief. Yet for the cross-examination, my lord, I'm not sure whether that stands was cleared up whether yeah, he told me he was saying it in front of you guys who were here in the passage he's going to request that for cross examination he must be accorded the right to obtain a record of the proceedings and thereafter he will be in a position to cross examine and the request was in the meantime when he's reading that record he doesn't want to delay the court so he's suggesting that he must be given an opportunity that although in terms of procedure, he's the first one who was cross-examined, but he'll request that the court allow him an indulgence so that he cross-examines after accused number five's cancer. You don't recall that? I do recall that. Oh, so good. Mr. Ngumad, how is it on Kulmanjad? Yes, Mr. Judge. Mr. Mnisi? My Lord, let me give an indulgence just to explain a thing or two. Uh. Um, it is true um, that at some point, Mr. Mgomizulu actually wrote a, an email to me. And oh, I he think, changed his mind. And, and I think the court's registrar was also CC'd. 
wherein he requested me to stand in for him up until last week Friday. Yeah. Um, uh, that other week Friday, that yes. Is. Which is when then he made the arrangements that <coughs> he will be following the proceedings on YouTube and also he would request that some record be made available for him in order to follow what has been happening in his, pres in his absence. But subsequent to that, I think my mandate to do that mm -hmm. then lapsed on last week Friday. Mm -hmm. But it is also true, my lord, that today when I arrived here, I raised the issue with um, my colleague Advocate Numalo. Subsequent the two advocate, uh, my colleague Advocate Baloi also arrived because uh, it dawned to me that we will keep on representing Mr. Mgome Zulu in his absence. We'll keep on requesting one of us to stand him on his behalf. But specifically the mandate that we carry in respect of us standing on behalf of him is a little bit bled. We don't know whether I've got full mandate in the process to represent accused number one or that is just to avoid that the proceedings should not be delayed. Now, I also mentioned to my colleague, um, my two colleagues, that's now Advocate Balu and Advocate Numalu, that at some point we basically left to. Actually, this court must be put in a proper perspective as to what the situation is. Because I'm not even so sure whether today there's any colleague who has been requested by Mr. Mgombezulu to stand in on his behalf. I'm not even so sure. Yes, I hear you. Yes. So we, we, as we were brainstorming, something came amongst us that apparently uh, he's got a candidate attorney. If there's somebody that needs to come and say something or two on behalf of Mr. Mgome Zulu and his condition and the way forward with regard to the representation of accused number one should be something that be, be put on record, but that should also come from his, 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 his practice the candidate attorney should at least come and tell the court what should then be happening. And the reason why we raised that, my lord, was because in one of the many ways, um, accused person's legal representative should always be at court when the proceedings are going on. His absence, again, in one of the many ways, necessitates that such proceedings should then be postponed in order to avoid and I'm saying this, my lord, as an officer of the court, in order to avoid a situation where later on it would be argued that the proceedings against that accused person whose legal representative has not been at court, whilst they were proceeding, they constitute a mistrial against him. So that will be that will be something else, my lord. I don't want to yeah, yeah, fine, mention what you. is it that, that would be, as it pleases the court, my lord, which is then the reason why we requested that at least we need to be, that position needs to be clarified. And if there is but anything, it can only be clarified in the presence, the court, my lord. It can only be clarified in the presence of Mr. Mugumezu. Are you saying? <laughs> yes, my lord. Mm. Alternatively, a proxy from his office. Yeah. Thank you, my lord. Anything you want to add, Mr. Valoi and Mr. Sibande? Do uh, Dr. Sibande? No, we, we, we confirm what, uh, <coughs> what Advocate Nisi put in record. Yeah. That, that was the, the ambit of the discussions. Yeah. Then I, I take the point. Mr. Mugumezulu must come to court, even if <coughs> he's got to be carried, to come and tell us whether he is still acting for accused number one. Is that not so? Because number one is endorsing Mr. Gomezulu's uh, arrangements. But the, like Mr. Mnisi is saying, I get the feel that Mr. Gomezulu may not be discussing the very arrangements he makes with uh, the court. Maybe he just uh, knows that the colleagues are representing, and I don't want to say his colleagues because apparently they don't know each other. They accused before court. So maybe Mr. Mgomizul must be called, I don't know, tomorrow, to come and tell us what he wants to do. Because people agree, like I was telling you about this case in England, 
people agree and then when something turns out the wrong way or the right way, then they say, no, no, we didn't understand our rights. You can say that, you know that. Yeah, although we agreed, I, it's a legal issue this, we didn't understand it. Another clever advocate will come and argue that. <laughs> Brigadier, when are you finishing your exams? 20, the 25th of November. So, it's, so you're available today and tomorrow? I'm available today and tomorrow. And thereafter? Then, thereafter I'm available next week, Wednesday. Wednesday? Yeah, Monday and Tuesday I'm not available. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday um, I'm available. Um, the following week as well, some days I won't be available, but thereafter they're not available, my lord. But is Mr. Mgumazil being finished with the court's record? Oh, you, you, are you being finished with the court record, all of you? Yes, we, we do get the electronic versions of the court Right, the so can't we make an order that he should get the court, the court record relating to his evidence? He wasn't present when you gave your evidence. He I was think half present, yes. three quarter yes. present. Yes, yes. yes. something correct. When did you start giving evidence? Um, sure, I think yeah. October. The date. Um, I just have to yeah. check my yeah. yeah. uh, uh, His evidence has been transcribed up to the 18th. I think he started giving evidence around the 10th of. The 10th of October. Yeah. Yes, th thereabouts. Yeah, then the, who, who will undertake to make a copy of of the so evidence was, from the 10th of October the first up to of Friday. October. I'm sorry, it was on the 1st of October. 1st of October? Yes. First okay, of the 1st of October. Yes. Who volunteers to... Up to, to, to today, what's the day today? The 7th. The 7th. Yes, yes. And this, this must be transmitted to him. You've got his email address today, so that when he comes tomorrow, he mustn't say, he doesn't know what has happened in court. I don't know, but he must get it. Whether it's a hard copy or, as you guys, do it electronically. Hello? Can you do it electronically? Huh? The what? You have the audio. No, no, no. I want him to read the evidence from the 1st of October up to the 6th, 7th. Okay, well, the 7th. He must even hear the arguments today. The 1st of October up to the 7th of October. Is that not so? Yes. Can he get a transcript or an audio or an electronic Copy. How do you do it, Mr. N Hello? Yeah. How do you yeah. do it? You've got it. I've got that. Don't you do it through your computer? Yes, we can forward them to him. To his computer. Yes. Yeah. Let's do it now. I'm going to read. I'm going to go out for about 15 minutes. You can phone him and tell him what I told you that you want to transmit. A copy of the record from the first up to the seventh. And that he must come to court tomorrow and come and explain to us, after having consulted with his client, whether he still wants the arrangement which he made with us that uh, he'll cross examine after the other counsels have cross examined to continue. Or whether he is prepared to forego that opportunity for whatever reason. I'll take the responsibility to, to phone him. Should I go out and then you do it? Yes, I'll do it. How many hours or days do you need? <laughs> 30 minutes. 30 minutes? Yes. Okay, let's adjourn for 30 minutes. Um.